Do you want to be part of the 4% of last year's matriculants who got a distinction for life sciences? Well, buckle up, sit and relax. Let's get into the common mistakes learners tend to make. But before we get there, make sure you're subscribed. We are going to first start off with the structure. We know life sciences paper one, it's 150 and it's out of two and a half hours, right? Now let's get into the topics. Reproduction in vertebrates. And then we have human reproduction, which comes 27% of the paper. And then responding to the environment of humans is 36% of that paper. Then we have responding of plants to the environment, which is 9% of that paper. And then 23% goes to endocrine and homeostasis. Now, you need to listen very closely. Only 4% of last year's matriculants got a distinction for life sciences. And because you want to be part of that this year, you are going to listen to the common mistakes learners tend to make. Remember in life sciences, it's very important that, um, what do you call this? It's very important that your terminology is up to date. And also, the words that you use do not change the meaning. If it changes the meaning of what you want to say, or it could be misinterpreted as something else. For example, a lot of learners in paper one would call, would say, urethra is a ureta. It's something else. It's not that. Or they would say epidermis. It's epidermis. Not the same thing. You get that? So it would say circular muscles, then we'll say ciliary muscles. Not the same thing. Get your terminology right. But the most important thing, you guys are failing scientific questions like nobody's business. And why is that? This is a topic that gets taught from grade 10. And we will cover it in a separate video. Now let's get into the common mistakes. Learners did not know how to calculate percentage increase. Remember, in life sciences, there's always going to be a calculation that they're going to ask you. It might not be percentage increase this year, but they're going to ask you for that. They're going to make sure that you, you, you are away. And remember that a calculation is three marks. And then if there's a graph, remember a graph is six marks. That's a nine out of 150. And then the scientific questions are typically like 11 marks. And you could literally get that 11 marks. That's already 20 out of 115. Section A is a given. You need to get 40. You already have 60. You see where I'm going with this? Very, very important. Let's get into it. And remember that the scientific questions can be applicable to any topic. It could even be on the eye. It could be on the plant. It could be on almost anything. So the most important thing here is the context. And we'll get into that just now. Let's get into the common mistakes. Learners do not follow instructions. Multiple choice, very strict. You have to tell us the answer. Is it C or D? Don't tell us the long story. Just choose one answer. And remember, if you choose two answers, the first one will get marked, whether the second one is correct or not. Answer one question as per instruction. And then another thing that learners tend to make is not being familiar with certain processes, but we'll get into the processes as we discuss them. I'm going through the summary. The most important thing, when we get into question two, the female reproductive system, let's get into the exam guideline. I think let's start there, because you guys are stressing me. Let's get into that. Now, hear me out. Remember, I'm highlighted the topics that are going to be in this paper. Reproduction in vertebrates is eight marks, and you need to literally get that. Usually, they'll put it in a multiple choice, or they'll make short questions, but typically not. So this is a topic you should not be focusing on the most. We'll get into what you should prioritize. I'm not saying neglect it, but it's not a topic you should spend a lot of time on. You need to know the reproductive strategies using examples. External and internal fertilization, the exam, the difference of those two, and examples. Ovipari, ovo, vivipari, and vivipari. Know the difference with examples. An amniotic egg, precocial and altrical development. Biological term, 
and parental care. Go and look at that. Now, write it down. Let's get into human reproduction. My high school teacher used to tell me that you cannot get a private part that you have wrong. Now that I think of it, that sounded very wrong. Anyways, labeling. You need to know how to label the male and the female reproductive system. It's going to be there. And if it comes out and you didn't listen to me, me and you, go and know how to label anything and the functions thereof. You need to know. And don't memorize a diagram. They can give you a diagram that looks so blurry that you start to question your own future. But if you know what what is supposed to look like, then you're going to do well. Labeling and the function. Remember, they can ask you the suitability. Remember, the function and the suitability of something is not the same. I have a mark. What's the function of a mark? Tell me in the comment box. And then discuss the structural suitability of this. Structural suitability. Talk about that. Tell me in the comment box, then I will know if you are ready. And then you need to know word genesis and spermatogenesis. You need to know that when we are forming gametes, what is it called if we are forming male gametes? And what is it called when we are forming female gametes? Will they ask you spermatogenesis? Less likely, but word genesis, they love word genesis. Under the influence of what? Does it happen? Another pro tip I'm going to give you now. I actually saw another guy talk about this. So when you use the memo to study, not using the past paper to study per se, but looking, if they ask you to describe what genesis, how do they want the answer? What do they take? Very, very important. Such processes you need to know as per memo. You need to know how to draw a sperm, and you need to know the functions of the different structures of a sperm. What does an acrosome do? What is the acrosome? Is it at the front or the back of a sperm? If a guy did a procedure and they have sexual intercourse with a female, is the female going to be pregnant? If not, why and what is the procedure? Why are men not allowed to wear tight pants? Why? Tell me in the comment section. Remember what Genesis? Diploid cells in the ovary undergo what? If you said my meiosis is oxide, mitosis, to form numerous follicles. Go on that exam guideline. You need to know how to draw an ova. Very important. And you need to know what is the jelly layer? Where is it? What is the haploid nucleus and where is the cytoplasm of an ova? Menstrual cycle make logical flow of the hormones these hormones work well with one another for example if progesterone is high what hormone would go down what hormone would hint to you that someone is pregnant okay what is fertilization and what is copulation do you know what copulation is go and find out and then you need to understand that process of the fertilization of how something moves from being a zygote to being a morula, a blastocyst, and then a fetus. Blastocyst and morula, you need to know the essential difference between those two, as well as implantation. And the role of the hormones, you need to know the hormones that play a role in the male as well as in the female. FSH, LH, what does LH mean? It's not luto, luto, it's luteinizing hormone. You get that. And then when it comes to the implantation and gestation, what is gestation? Is it the period that the woman is pregnant or not? Then you need to know what is a chorion and what is a villi. You did that in grade 11, but you need to know what that is. Very, very important. Let's get into the things that people struggle with. This is where people tend to lose the ball. This is where people tend to lose the ball. Responding to the environment of humans. It's the nervous system. Remember, we have an endocrine and an exocrine. 
but we'll get into that when we touch on endocrine. You need to know how to label the brain. You need to know in the functions of the various parts. Spinal cord, we have an autonomic and a peripheral nervous system. You need to know the essential difference between these two. You need to know how to draw that nerve. You need to know an arc reflex. Diseases that you need to know. Alzheimer and multiple sclerosis. You need to know what causes them. And in order for you to know what causes them better and understand it better, you need to understand how that reflex arc works and how these disorders affect that. Because we could ask you, explain the process of a reflex arc in relation to a patient who has Alzheimer's. So then we want to see whether you understand what happens in Alzheimer's, but also do you know the reflex arc? Very, very important. The human eye, I'm going to give you one tip. You don't need to memorize accommodation and pupillary mechanism for far and near, and you don't need to. You need to know only one. For example, if you know pupillary mechanism, or let's say um, accommodation for near vision. If you know that one, and if they ask you far, you know it's the opposite of that. The most important thing you need to know is what happens in there. And then you need to know the visual defects, short-sightedness, long-sightedness, astigmatism, and cataracts. Very, very important. The ear, you need to know how to label the ear. But also remember that ear is a very, 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 very important thing that works in hearing. We hear that. But balance, the ear helps to balance. Does that mean if I close my ears, I can't balance? Is that what it means? No. Go and study. Another thing, treatments of hearing defects. We spoke about visual defects. We spoke about hearing defects. Middle ear infection. Deafness. Very, very important. The use of hearing aids and cochlear implants. How does a cochlear implant work? What does a cochlear do? Those are the things you need to find out for me. Let us get into the endocrine system. Then we will end off with scientific methods. Okay, endocrine and exocrine. We spoke about you knowing that. Define what a hormone is. Defining and what it does is not the same thing. Definition is what is it? And function is what does it do? Very, very important. You need to know homeostasis. Homeostasis remembers that process of maintaining a constant internal environment. And you need to know that for carbon dioxide, glucose, salt, water concentration, temperature, and pH. But mostly they would ask you negative feedback of the thyroxin, a blood glucose, carbon dioxide, water, and salt. Remember the most essential thing for you here is to pick up. Some question papers, they do not ask you to tell us, give us the negative feedback if someone's glucose is high. If I tell you Mbali's feeling lightheaded, she's feeling dizzy, or you know she's very weak and we know she's diabetic, we know that if she's, she's feeling a bit fatigued and you know she's very flabby, flabby, her sugar might be low. So they'll give you some hints. You need to be looking out for those hints. Very, very important. And then what are the diseases that you can get from an imbalance of thyroxin? What if someone's blood glucose is very high? What disease could they get? Make sure you know how to write diabetes mellitus. Very important. And then negative feedback again, when people are sweating, vasodilation and vasoconstriction. Remember, keywords are very important. Very, very important. Because they will just say one word, then that one word should give it away. Especially when it comes to biological terms. Let's get into responding to the environment of plants. This is where people tend to lose the marks. You need to know what geotropism and phototropism is, the difference, and how do they look diagrammatically? How do they look? Very, very important. And then in terms of plant defense mechanism, what role does thorns play? The thorns, what do they play the role? And chemicals. Is there a difference between these two plant defense mechanism? 
And then also, how do we control the weed using plant hormones? We're not talking about that weed. We're talking about the weed in plants. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Now we are getting on to scientific investigative questions.